I'm really excited about having all three of you here, uh, four of you, sorry, Herbert, all f uh, on, the, on the stage, um, because uh, they're two really, really interesting films, um, uh, and I would urge you in some way to, to try and see them, because I think, you know, formally, in terms of the, the work they're doing with sound to make films which are about sound, um, they show a, a level of craft and attention to detail which um, is brilliant and which we're only going to be able to hint at in the clip. So um, I hope we can do a good job in, in showing what your, what your films are. Um, uh, I think we can. So we're going to, we're going to give it a go and um, start now. I mean, I, I wanted to, to start with you, um, uh, Dominic, to tell us about the um, you, what what is the Ursus factory? Um, we'll get on to the symphony bit in a middle in a, in a minute. But what actually is the Ursus factory? Uh, one, two, yeah. three. <laughs> the factory is a factory. The factory Ursus factory was a factory of tractors, building tractors for all the Europe. Quite successful company exporting tractors around Europe and uh, Africa, I think. They started building tractors in 49, I believe. Wow. And they ended building tractors in Poland uh, in 1990. Uh, it was one of the biggest factories in Poland at the time, uh, having 20,000, 25,000 workers working every year. They were able to build 150,000 tractors a year, uh, but they didn't do it as much. They, they were building about 80,000. It was one of the biggest successes of uh, communistic Poland, mm -hmm. uh, but it was not only this evil communistic factory, but it was also actually a good factory um, connecting people somehow and building a communi community giving them much more than uh, this terrible communistic apparatus could give, usual, w was usually giving people. And, and so the, and the, the, the idea for the, for the film, I should say, the director is Jam Jasmina uh, Wojciech. Wojciech. So um, the idea for the film came when the factory was being knocked down or it had, it had finished production and it the was finishing its line. The idea of the precisely started when she was walking around Ursus in, in Warsaw and seeing the huge, huge factory being destroyed, put to the ground uh, one by one, one by one. And she was surprised to see these amazing buildings and started to think, what was it? And then discovered the whole history of Ursus. Uh, the history of the company, was also, which was also actually destroyed stupidly by uh, post-communist uh, movements uh, in Poland, right. kind of, you know, wrong marketing decisions. However, what we know now, it would be also very, very hard to rebuild the factory from modern times just because of the pollution of the, of the chemicals and oil in the walls, in the ceilings, in the ground, it actually would have to be uh, kind of, I don't know, tarnished like mm. 20 centimeters or 30 to make it n like uh, healthy for people. So but still, it was destroyed in a stupid manner. Nothing was actually, nothing is saved. Yeah. So what we see in this uh, movie, the rest of the, the Ursus factory, which is in the movie, is already not existing at all. They will build a factory, um, uh, houses there and some kind of you know market 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 marketing marketplaces. So very you know similar to many places both in 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 the UK and um, elsewhere in Europe where the old industrial I was going to say heritage but the old in, industrial places are giving way to to, to urban right. development. Right and and some kind of uh, I would say um, some kind of ethic work ethic. Uh, was also destroyed because of that, because people were actually having, these workers from Ursus had huge respect for the work, for the machine, yeah. for, the, for, the, for the effect of the work. It was not only just a job for them, it was actually much more. And so your, the idea of the film is, is um, 
to recreate, and this is the synopsis in the program, I think, says it recreates a day in the Ursus factory through sound. Uh, recreate uh, work in the factory through sound and movement, actually, choreography. Uh, so now we can only say kudos to our choreographer, Rafa Urbatsky, who has passed away three weeks ago because he was ill for most of his life. He was fighting his uh, illnesses. He was still dancing and choreographing. But the, the whole movie was to recreate the work in the factory and bring back the memory, uh, the only thing we, we, we have after the, after the Ursus, and make it some, some, somehow positive without this uh, political connotation. Mm. And actually make these workers honored and happy. And they are very happy. So I, I want to first look, look at a first clip from the film, because I think, it, and with both of your works, actually, um, or with both works, uh, I, I've, been, I've been finding it quite hard to explain them to people, actually. They are things that you need to, to see and listen to to get the, to get the, the effect of them. So I want to show um, uh, uh, the first clip of of Symphony of the Ursus Factory, um, and then we'll move on to uh, The Sound is Innocent, and then we can start the discussion. So we'll, we'll see in a, a little while how you created those sounds with, with the people, and then built from those sounds it, into the soundtrack. But just briefly, when you what, what are the elements of the sound of the film made of? What are the different elements? <clears throat> uh, just one more thing. I'm the composer and, and the, uh, I made the concept of the movie, but the sound designer is Marcin Lenarczyk. Right. He could not be here, but uh, he also was a very important part of this work. Anyway, the elements of this movie called Symphony of the Russus Factory is the real sounds which happen in the first 20 minutes of the movie. Then we have my electronic music, which is mostly based on my vocals and electronics. Then we have kind of a solos made by voices by workers. Mm. Then we have also recording of the choir of the workers of the Russo's uh, Symphony singing experimental music, people who are 80, sometimes 85, and they were working in the factory factory <laughs> and they are singing my, uh, my ideas, uh, actually singing also their own work. And the other element is the um, brass uh, orchestra of the Ursus, okay. uh, which I also made a workshop with and made them improvise. We, uh, we see, they, I, I don't think that's them outside the window. No. Or but maybe. Somebody maybe. made us... Uh, but on cue, a brass band strikes up in Sheffield. Amazing. So it was made up of made yeah, up so of all it was those made images. of uh, all the all these elements recorded in the studio, mixed, remixed by myself. Sometimes I took them as samples. It was very complex, multi-layered work. And and we'll see a little bit more of it um, uh, in in a while. But as I say, it is it is quite hard, and also on screens like this to get a sense of the sound it's uh, for both of the films they absolutely need to be seen in um, in the cinema on a big screen with great um, sound systems so um, we should all support cinema for, <laughs> for these films I think so Joanna and Martin your, your film um, and you'll need to, to share that microphone but your film again is about um, it, it's it, if I can say it's about music it's also about the place that that um, sound and that history of sound um, has happened. I really hope the brass band stops because it's <laughs> slightly distracting. But um, tell us about the, the place that you shot the film in um, and, and what that place means. Uh, yeah, the... Um the most important place uh, for our film, it was uh, Slovakian Radio Broadcasting Building. Uh, and it, it's a very interesting building, a brutalist building. Um, and for me, uh, 
the meaning uh, was that uh, one one building uh, is a kind of a glue or uh, splitting every person's inside together uh, and uh, every uh, every music genres together. Uh, and it's is it a building that you yourself have worked in? Did you work in that building? No, 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 uh, because I'm from Czech Republic, not, not, not from Slovak, right. but Martin is Slovak. Right. Uh, yep. and, uh, and so that, um, uh, did, did you think, was it a, like a location for the film, or was the film also about the space? No, it's not about uh, the space. Some, some of the uh, topics, uh, I uh, want to tell through the uh, through the scenography or through the uh, image. Yes. So through the so, set design. Yes. And one one of this uh, is the building uh, because radio uh, radio was uh, super important for beginning of uh, electronic music. Uh, for example, in the UK. Uh, it was uh, BBC uh, radiophonic workshop yes. uh, in in uh, f uh, French. Uh, it was GR, etc., etc. So uh, th this is for for me uh, one one thing. And so and so you know electronic music is the is the subject again. It's quite hard to sort of categorise the film. I think we should see the the beginning. Um, it's I'm not sure it's exactly the beginning of the film, but just to show um, what that place looks like. Maybe Shall one we? small thing that uh, we were shooting on, sim uh, on the several places, from Eiffel Tower to no? Sound Mirror. So actually, lots of very uh, expensive uh, location recordings just end up in the, and I will not tell you where, but in this <laughs> building somehow. But there was lots of location uh, places. Right. Yeah, because it, it was, uh, our gift to uh, to uh, the main responders, um, be because uh, I asked to uh, Franz Abonet, uh, who's one of the interviewees. Yes, yeah. yes, and he he told me I really want to uh, I really want to uh, record Eiffel Tower. Yeah, in, in the morning. To re so <laughs> to record. It. Well, that. that <laughs> That one but might in, a, in a film, it is, it is only a small fragment, it, exactly. but it was super expensive. But I think, I think the Slovak, the Slovak um, radio and, t and TV headquarters is a character in the film. We'll just see the first clip, which, um, which shows some of that. And I think also shows, um, shows you, Joanna, who are, you're the guide, or a kind of protagonist guide in the, in the film. So um, can we play that next clip? So, as I, I think the, um, the, the, the history of the film is also through that, you know, all of that technology that we're seeing falling off the conveyor belt, um, isn't it? Um, Herbert, do you have a view on that? No. Um, what, what was your intention in, in all of those, in using all of that technology I think you, you did say to me, I think, um, that uh, radio is what the internet is now. You know, back in the time, radio was advanced technology um, and had the same impact. Was that the idea behind using all of, you know, all of those different bits of equipment? Yeah, because... Um uh, that, that the other other thing uh, what, what I want to say uh, through the uh, through the scenography or set design uh, that uh, for electronic music uh, composers it, it's it's a, a instrument uh, tool a technology uh, crucial mm. so what which which uh, instrument you are uh, used, so it's it's very uh, 
yeah, for, for example, uh, one very, very uh, concrete drum machine uh, uh, was on the beginning of, of uh, uh, electronic uh, gender, music yeah. gender, for, for example, jungle or... Yeah. A genre, yes. Yeah. No, no. I, I, I so, uh, this, this thing was, was, was super important for me, but it is very boring to uh, talking about this. <laughs> because I, I, uh, I don't like uh, when my husband uh, <laughs> is uh, uh, talking with other, uh, other friends, uh, composers, about instruments. Mm. I, for me, it is a tech talk. It's, <laughs> it's super boring. So I, uh, when when I prepared this movie, I uh, I was sure that uh, this kind of uh, tech talk uh, <laughs> really wasn't going to be. No, in no. <laughs> I mean, the 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 instrument in a way that you're working with, Dominic, is is the human voice, isn't it? I mean, that's the main instrument in the film, particularly from from what we yeah. saw. It's actually quite funny because uh, 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 actually the idea of the music of this movie appeared um, before we finished the script. And I'm a singer, uh, singing for 27 years, and I also invented some 15 years ago my own method of vo vocal workshops where I understand vocal voice as a communication tool, mm. but not only through language, which language is already semantic, it means something precise. Voice as a communication, like a touch, like a look, like a smell. And I discovered that opening people's voices and communication through sound without language, completely without imitation, yeah. without imitating emotions, is actually doing something very good to people communication in general. It's opening also their breathing, the use of their own expression. But I discovered that I, this way, people who never do music can actually very quickly do mu make, start to make music, improvise experimental crazy music, because the main idea is communication. And this, this, this experience I had led to my idea that let's make the workers of the Ursus, people who were working physically for 40, 50 years, let's make them sing it. And this lady who was actually doing this, if you remember this clip, this is the lady who was working for 40 years in the place where they were... Uh, basically throwing big metal wheels, 29 kilograms each, wow. and sh just to the big uh, st stove, heating uh, place. Yeah, the furnace could be. Furnace. So they were just melting this to the metal, right? You understand me? Mm. Okay, so each wheel is 29 kilograms, and her daily norm was about seven tons. In total, Amazing. she was the only uh, woman doing this ever in this factory. And she was doing about 16 tons a day because she was earning as much as she would put inside. So <laughs> making her sing it and, and, and remember this work was, was quite a special experience. Um, and, and it's something you've been doing for a long time. You've been doing it for 14 years. I've. These uh, workshops. These workshops. Yes, yes, yes. The first one I gave was in Berlin, actually, in 2003, maybe four. I don't even remember. Mm. Somebody asked me to make a workshop accompanying the 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 show, the theatre show. So let's let's have a look. This is um, in the film itself. You only actually see the process yeah. over the end credits, don't you? But yeah. but so you've brought some um, some images from the workshop, which we Maybe, can see yeah. which we can see now and then we can chat about it afterwards. But it's cool. these are basically people from the factory who you kind of invited to take part in these workshops. These were people auditioned. Uh, we made an uh, audition, kind of a, you know, uh, 
how to say, we announced casting, that we look yeah. casting. We, we made a casting for workers in the, for the fa fa uh, Usus factory. If they want to take part in this movie, there was like 30 or 40 people who came. We selected some of them, not all of them. And then basically <laughs> made, made them meet the wall. <laughs> what I, how, how I say it, uh, it was a very hard experience for in the beginning because yeah. they could not not even understand, I think, what's going on. I mean, they were never ever singing. And, and after half a year, because the workshops were, were, took nine months, uh, every month or every two weeks, to prepare them to really do something on the screen. I mean, it's very hard, it was very hot. They, they had to repeat the scenes, so it, they so were actually like a musicians almost. Let, let, so let's just um, see that next clip and you can... Uh Just well, to explain, it, yeah. just a word, because of course it was in Polish, so you don't know what we were talking about. These people were amazingly explaining to me how they remember their sounds and what's the difference between certain hammers, between certain machines. The one sound was like, <laughs> and the other was like, <laughs> they really remembered it. It was surprising for me, and we were also trying to recreate the, the thing which is in the movie, because this Usus factory was also uh, producing metal for the tractors. And there was a hammer, a 16-ton hammer. <laughs> it was always hitting t three times. And it was so powerful, strong, that people in a radius like 20 kilometers, they were feeling it at home. Wow. That's why they were trying to recreate, recreate for me the, the, the feeling of it. And in the movie, if you will have a chance to see the movie, in the movie we really did the sound. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, what's interesting in this, in, in maybe a sort of visual dominated culture, is that, is that the memories, they sort of can feel stronger through sound, perhaps, than, than maybe the, the pictures. I don't know, did, did you feel that by re the, those people remembering the sounds they made, did it have an effect on them, do you think? Uh, definitely, yes. Uh, one of the ladies on the movie uh, actually was working very hard in this factory and she still is crying when she recalls the work because she loved the work. I mean, it was hard, but she, she felt it. That she was working eight hours a day in the, next to the machine, which mm. was shaking, you know, no, no, no. Um, what she explained to me that she was putting all the small metal parts which were made just a moment before and the shaking of the machine was taking away all the smallest particles of metals so the, it, mm. this, this shaking machine was making them clean you understand me I mean is it, is it clear for you yeah, yeah. so yeah. it was <laughs> and in the movie there is a big scene and she's having a solo with this recreating this shaking yeah so um, no. so they actually had a huge memory and this this memory of this huge sound around them was very very strong and some of them are actually talking about it in the movie if you will see the whole movie indeed and i mean martin you the um uh, you know your film is also in a way dealing with the the history of I mean, it's, it's not a history film, is it? The Bjorn Jarenas film. But it is taking you back into the, the past. I'd like to look at the next um, clip and then talk, and then afterwards, let's maybe talk about the different uh, types of sound that you used in creating the soundtrack. So can we play the next, the, the next clip? So that's just a, a, a short extract, and I know it's quite hard to, to you know, to uh, you sometimes need to see these things at much greater length. But just tell me what what are, what are some of the sounds, or what was your idea in building up the sound design and the sound layering of the film? Uh, you know, a film about music in a way. I would like to first to say thank you as well to Adam Monish, who was the main sound designer from the perspective of film sounds. And because uh, we are working at this kind of tiny level between the composition and sound design, so 
I'm as well sound designer of that film, right. and composer, but as well a curator or a multifunctional person in that film, but um, because we did work very closely together in certain way, too closely. <laughs> Uh, but uh, as, as a composition for me, that film was like quite tricky in two things because the first that uh, you have to keep your compositional gesture somewhere behind the stuff because actually this is about the fil film about music. We're talking about people, uh, my respect is very... Uh, uh, and uh, I, I don't think that it has a sense in the film about Stravinsky to start to do music as a Stravinsky do. Or, what or do you mean by that? In general, it was kind of an like explanation, you know. So there was lots of like big composer you could see on the mm. uh, on this uh, uh, on this uh, uh, wood, what is it? Uh, the iron um, drop wood drop screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah in the in the in, in in the screening. Right. And. Uh, so there was the first thing, like that we are not actually th this music rather having the functional about to uh, to be a guide through and somehow a little bit to suggest k kind of compositional methods and being uh, depending on which part, like kind of having functional. Okay, so I will explain. And the other thing was that all the sounds we are going to use yeah. are actually the pro uh, products of the of the shooting. There was no very, very few possible technical uh, uh, like changes. Uh, so I would you say that there was, a, there was a material which was recorded like and given me in different ways. I, I can explain later. Like in the... Uh, yeah, overshooting, but uh, not in, a bu in this building, radio building. So, so as uh, we mentioned, we did lots of recordings like uh, in the... Uh, from uh, w when we were doing actually the first part, which we call documentary part, and we, then the second part we call the fictional part. So there was a recording uh, in a, an Eiffel Tower. There was a recording of historical instruments in a, in a Paris studio, where is the synthesizer? Which is probably is only one in the world. Uh, and I just gave some kind of instructions, and then I took a material to the studio, and I was listening to this. Uh, there was no any bending of of actually to, uh, like tone or the pitch. So the, for example, the pitch of the really just the playing and starting the tape machine actually matches to the pitch, which was recorded randomly on the, on the, on the f recording from the synthesizer I got from the guys from, I actually don't know who did it. Uh, somebody we asked just, can we have please the sound of the synthesizer? So there was a kind of like this, in this part was, uh, okay, this is on my table and how can I put these things together and create? I mean, the, sorry, Joanna. Yeah, and the, the, uh, this um, documentary uh, recording uh, material was material for, for Martin, for music, uh, but the, f the uh, sound engineer, Adam Bonesh, uh, working with, uh, with the other material, he uh, made a lot of follies, because- Sorry, a lot of- Folly, folly sound. Like, like fully, like the oh, fully, uh, fully right. like the effects, right? Yeah, yeah. And we c kind of co combine all the, all of the things. Because uh, when when we uh, shooting um, uh, in a radio building, the uh, shooting was ve very similar as a as a fiction movie shooting. Hmm. So um, I think what we might do is um, look at the last clip from your film, which. Um, for me, bring some of these aspects together, and then we'll come back um, to the to the to the last bit of yours, and uh, and then we'll go to some questions. So uh, let's uh, let's play the next clip, please. <laughs> no, so that sounds like quite a useful um, a useful bit of bit of kit, um, I, I think, and. Um, Again, it's quite hard without. It's quite hard to describe the 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 sound on that. But, but this was one of the most difficult part, after all, because we wanted to bring some kind of physicality of the sound to the theater. Yes. And actually, we kind of fail in the theater, which are not ready for to distribute this uh, really energy, or somehow how 
or like like this was like this clip was like very uh, reduced in uh, many. Sorry, uh, very reduced in the right. quality of the sound. So maybe I, f I see a few people having the possibility to see it in the in the theater. So they maybe will have completely different experience. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was very much to bring certain experience. So the, like working on the compositional part of that this piece was very much about the dramaturgy of uh, information. So there was a kind of proto music in the sense of the, having the beat around 69 BPM and just like, like going through. So there was no really ambition to create like finished piece or like polished piece of music, but yeah. somehow to suggest certain situation of and playing with that. Like there's this kind of feedback which appear to, to break with the resonance uh, of the glass. Uh, the, the, the glass or having this, uh, this kind of glitchy sounds and kind of playing and, and now like the uh, volume of the room is gonna change and the speaker in the, in the room it continues with the whole, whole passage with this kind of things. Uh, and as, as I said, that each part was like very specific in, the, in that kind of way uh, that we were talking about something and we would like to somehow to bring this experience. And, and you had, and Joanna, yeah? Yeah. Uh, at uh, the be beginning of, uh, of uh, Southern music post-production process, uh, I told to Martin that I really need to uh, support each chapter uh, because each of musicians and uh, each chapter uh, having, um, having a different atmosphere, different uh, aesthetic. Yeah. So because the, the film is is a number of speakers. You, you studied both in, did you both study in the UK? And different film language. Yeah, there's that as well. I, I studied in the UK and spent quite, uh, like being very closely related to, to the scene. With the, with the electronic music scene. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's now look at the, the um, last clip. I mean, you, you mentioned the choreographer of the uh, of the film um uh, rest in peace and i think the 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 last clip that we've chosen chosen really sort of brings it all brings to, it together, all together it? absolutely like the last clip is 12 minute dance of tractors uh workers at the orchestra we can see it and i'm sorry it's going to be a bit small on this screen yeah. but um because uh, of the size of the clip but um i hope the uh the spectacle comes across. So next clip, please. It's just a fragment. You yes. just want to clarify the, the, the whole music on, on this, this movie. Movie is one hour long. Music takes 40 minutes. When it starts, it actually never ends besides some breaks which are necessary for dramaturgy mm. but this clip uh, is the, like a final of the final is about 12 11 minutes it's growing actually like a bolero ravel's bolero uh, from almost zero to maximum I and mean, this fragment which you saw is actually the only stop in the beat because it's it's made to the groove almost like a techno groove but this fragment which you saw is actually the this this brass orchestra which was playing for 40 years music like then da 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 all you know this this like standard a, brass standard band brass, music. brass 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 music and then i came for 3 days and made them improvise contemporary music they were very very happy <laughs> so so this is a recording of them improvising in the studio and actually uh, what i love about it uh, and we because we will release the music from the movie on the on the cd or whatever and uh, actually, I made them do something which is most unique. It's not in the movie, but it will be on the, on, the, on the recording. That I made them play their biggest hit. It's called like a Spanish tartanella or something, I don't know. It's a very funny piece. It, they usually play it a little bit out of tune, so it's even more funny and more <laughs> amazing. And I made them play it like this. It's like 25 people. So 12 people is playing this, this tune. And right. the, the rest is uh, just reacting for my directing and they completely destroyed the piece. So the, the, and, they, and they actually made it. So it was very difficult to keep up 
and 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 all around the other musicians were doing it was really really hard for them but they did it i was very proud so that they achieved this level of uh, modern music performance and, and improvisation yeah 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 so so this clip doesn't show it if you see it in the movie it's very it's a huge music with a lot of bass also and uh, and i want to also say that um, with with Marcin Lenarczyk, we we made a huge effort to. It's 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 not really working here in this it, with this PA, but we made a lot big 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 effort to combine the beautiful tractor sounds with 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 my music. So the industrial music, I think. Very you industrial, it, and uh, uh, we actually hired uh, seven different types of tractors uh, on this movie, and all of them have a different sound. And we, we are really bring it up. We, we, we're trying to like, make industrial music, but also dance music, because the, the last part of the movie is kind of recollection. Like mm -hmm. a, it's like a final meeting of the workers with actually the tractors. Some of them were working in this factory, but they didn't, didn't really have much contact actually with the tractors themselves. They yes. were not using them. And yes. then this is the moment when it's like a ghost thing, you know. It's like a, a, they are like a zombies in this in this last fragment. So it's a dance of the zombies in a way. Be beautiful way to end it. So let's um, see if there are any questions um, about. Uh, here we go. One hand straight straight away there in the middle. Hi. Is this on? Yes, it is. Uh, I saw the um, film, um, the Symphony of the Ursus Factory. It's fantastic. Uh, a Thank really you. wonderful, wonderful score. Uh, I wondered, um, firstly, how long you workshopped with the uh, men and women to produce the, the sounds that uh, made the final film. And secondly, how much of the sound that they made ended up being in the, treat the treatment itself, whether you used samples and manipulated them to create the tones and the harmonies? Uh, the work took nine months uh, of meetings every two weeks or one month, be depending on which part of the year it was. So nine months, but not every day, not every week, every two weeks and every month, but nine months. So they could repeat it, actually. It was, it was the aim to, to make them repeat it on the, on the set. You know, one thing is to do it in a workshop after one hour, and the other thing is to, we are filming, bam, 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 and you do it. So nine months, uh, quite intense, three, four hours uh, of, of work. Uh, now, the question about sounds. Uh, so there are two levels of, of the workers' sounds in this movie. The first level is uh, when the music starts at minute 20, maybe, until 45, 50 the workers' sounds are the solos over the huge, growing um, electronic, post-electronic music. So their sounds are solos, so you can hear them clearly. And then I, I take these sounds they made, I sang them myself in the studio and made it, because it was actually working better to copy and put it in my music, then, then look for the p perfect sound in their performance, which was never perfect. It was great as, it was perfect in its imperfection. But in the last fragment of this movie, the workers were recorded professionally in the studio. We have four hours of the recordings, and they are also used in the end of the movie as maybe not a harmony, but as a, as a soundscape. And in the last fragment of the movie, if you saw, you saw, maybe others will see, there is a little soprano. <laughs> this is a secretary of Ursus. Uh, <laughs> she didn't even know until she saw the movie that she's a soloist. I was like, this is you. She, what? <laughs> really, she had a beautiful voice, never, never singing in her life. She has a beautiful voice. She's a secretary. She's in the movie doing it. And, and she's singing this little... <laughs> Haunting, beautiful okay. Meredith Monk. Lovely. Was there, was there another, another question? Another question or two? No. Um, well, look, I'd, I'd encourage you to... Sorry, would, yes, go ahead. Would you like to ask one? 
Uh, hi, just a question for Dominic. Um, you spoke earlier about the individual hammer sounds and these sort of very percussive sounds. I was wondering if you could speak a bit about the more, um, the sort of drones that you got them to sing all together, because they seem to me to really evoke a, a real sense of the kind of collective memory of the place, like a sort of a background hum, um, mm. and why you chose to do that in that way. Uh, why did I choose what? So the drones, the... In the end, you talk about the last. No, clip? no, in the in the in the first half, like where they're so where they're all singing together, like long notes. You oh. know, singing long notes is one of the simplest way to feel together when you sing. You know, when you want to connect with other person, and you don't perform a particular song which is composed, and then you you just follow the rules. If you half improvise and half connect with other person. There are two, two basic things I have in my workshop which work the best. First is singing together a note, mm -hmm. whichever it is. It may be not the same note. It may be absolutely... Actually, I ask them to no, never sing the same note. Let's, like, can we do it now? Like, everybody sings That's its own ah. Uh. One, two, three. Uh. You see, it's beautiful. It's our ah. Uh. It will never be repeated. It's, it's our collective. And... And actually, it works because if you sing it for two minutes, you actually start to really hear where you are, what you do, how you do it. So it's it's the best tool. The other thing is a signal. So I do hat, and you do. You see, we communicate already. Of course, we, if we would do it in a more quiet situation, we'd be even better. So <laughs> I use these things because they always work, and actually, they are also. Uh, they are refraining with the reality, you know? There is a lot of noise outside. It's, it's a drone. But it's, there is a lot of sounds like that in the reality. Bap, bap, bap. Everything is in the rhythm. Mm. So I just follow the reality, you know? I just follow the life. <laughs> and mechanical sounds, which I analyze all my life, are also based on two things. Drones. Many machines do You know, in the, in the, even in the lift you can hear it. Some, of, some production machines have this and the other sound, ta -ta 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 -ta. everything is rhythm or drone. So I was just following, you know, my exper experience. Great. Well, look, can I um, ask for a, a big round of applause for Joanna, Martin, Dominic, and Herbert for being here today.